Altered Nostalgic, Episode 2. What if YouTube never existed? YouTube is one of the most visited websites in all of the internet. In the past 10 years since it was founded by former PayPal employees, YouTube has become one of the most influential places to go in cyberspace. With over a billion users and over 300 hours of video content uploaded every minute, YouTube has become, to many of us, a part of our daily lives. But what if YouTube never existed? What if, in an alternate history, Steve Chen, Chad Hurley, and Jawid Karim simply never went along with their plan to create an accessible video sharing site for people to use? Well, here's the thing. An internet without YouTube is like living in the dark ages of computer technology. Without YouTube, information and entertainment would be a lot less accessible and more difficult to find. The utter convenience of recording a video and having the ability to upload it on a massively popular website has become the standard. In February 14, 2005, I was just four months away from graduating high school when YouTube started. Throughout my entire high school run from September 2000 to June 2005, YouTube was either completely non-existent or largely unheard of. This means my generation of peers born in 1987 never got the benefit of using YouTube in either elementary school or high school. School projects that required students to record video clips such as music videos or commercials, particularly in classes such as marketing, never got the benefit of YouTube. Back in the day, we had to use a basic camera recorded on VHS or CD and play it for the class through basic video playback, either with computer or television. It was a lot more cumbersome and tedious, particularly with using a digital camera. Who has a computer that is able to edit these videos? What if the file's format itself is incompatible with a class's computer? Without YouTube, recording videos would just be your typical amateur, homemade private practice. You wouldn't be able to conveniently submit school projects to your teacher via YouTube. File sharing and video hosting did not begin with YouTube, nor was it the first website to feature user-generated content. However, it was the first to truly catch on a massive scale. The first time I heard of YouTube and watched videos on it was around fall of 2005, and by 2006, the file sharing website had exploded into the mainstream. Over the years, many people became mini-celebrities with their popular YouTube channels becoming household names, such as Geriatric1927, Smosh, Lonely Girl 15 Kev Jumba, Nigahiga, Fred, PewDiePie, I Justine, The Amazing Atheist, Ray William Johnson, Marquis Scott, aka Nonstop, was good. None of these people would be relevant if YouTube never existed. Where would they upload videos? We wouldn't know anything about them because they wouldn't have the opportunity to build a fan base. If James Rolfe never had a YouTube channel, his hilarious reviews of old NES games would have never become popular and the AVGN slash Angry Nintendo Nerd Persona wouldn't have influenced countless other YouTube channels to make their own angry or satirical game reviews. YouTube was filled with overnight sensations and viral videos, from babies, sports clips, music videos, whiny attention seekers, beauty gurus, video game vloggers, documentaries, short films, and real-life footage. By 2007, YouTube featured presidential democratic debates including Senator Obama, which further displayed the website's massive popularity in the Western world. If these types of videos never existed, or were simply unable to be seen on a worldwide scale such as YouTube, our image of the world would be a lot less interesting and less informative. From the moment they happen, catastrophic events such as earthquakes, police brutality footage, riots, and accidents can be seen worldwide. Compared to similar sites on the internet such as Dailymotion, 
Blip.tv, Vimeo, or Meta Cafe, YouTube was miles ahead in terms of popularity, community, and viral content. In China, other popular video hosting sites such as Tuduo and Yuku featured very similar formats to YouTube and perhaps they wouldn't even exist without YouTube's ideas to borrow from. Even the adult film industry has been affected by tube sites such as Pornhub, YouPorn, RedTube, and XHamster for their YouTube influence file sharing of pornographic content. Along with permit laws, the porn industry has declined in recent years because of constant piracy. If YouTube never happened, these porn tube sites would not exist in their current form and instead continue to generate money via traditional pay sites and be featured in smaller, shorter clip sites. In other words, free porn would be much harder to find in quantity and quality, much like it used to be in the early mid-2000s. Thus, even YouTube has changed viewing smut on the internet. Crazy. So, was YouTube just at the right place and at the right time? If YouTube never got started, would other file sharing sites that already existed grow popular and essentially become what YouTube is now? In short, no. I simply cannot see Dailymotion, Blip, or Yuku either existing without YouTube or connecting with an audience as well as YouTube did in the past 10 years. YouTube was unique for a reason. It resonated with the fans and cultivated an enormous audience during the mid-late 2000s. Its very idea of accessible file sharing and promotion of user-generated content gave our lives full of videos to watch and enjoy since 2005. If YouTube never existed, the internet would still be like what it used to be during my high school years in the early 2000s. An information superhighway, yes, but with much less excitement and fewer social media options to engage with. No video hosting websites would exist in a massive scale, and the only file sharing hotspots we'd see are niche, specialized sites such as SoundClick and Newgrounds. Finding content would require tediously searching online, looking up videos and clips of varying degrees in quality and quantity. If you want news clips, for example, you'll have to go to CNN or Fox News or Al Jazeera or the Young Turks websites specifically and watch whatever's available over there. If you want music, you'll have to go to MTV.com or some MP3 sharing website like SoundClick or MP3.com. If you're looking for pro wrestling videos, the convenience of finding a million matches on YouTube won't be around anymore. You'll have to go to WWE's website or get the WWE Network in order to watch limited wrestling clips. You won't get New Japan footage or Triple A or Ring of Honor videos on a WWE website. Many people wouldn't have the opportunity to share their voices and opinions, and without YouTube's ad partnership program, many monetized channels wouldn't be making money through ad revenue at all. This website is not perfect, and have changed in layout so many times over the years, with many features taken away. Many channels have been unfairly taken down for false flagging, or strict copyright infringement, or some other controversial suspensions. I sympathize with those people and feel their pain because YouTube can be inconsistent with addressing abuse. At the same time, not every single channel is worth watching because many of them produce the same kind of videos and after a while gets hackneyed and redundant over time. At the end of the day, YouTube has allowed me to experience the world through the comfort of my own bedroom. To this day, I watch YouTube and find something new every time, such as Bernie Sanders speeches, or the latest reviews in a recent video game, or John Oliver footage from his TV show, or even obscure wrestling footage from the 60s and 70s that I would have never seen 10 to 15 years ago browsing through the internet or watching television. If YouTube never existed, our modern internet experience would have been greatly diminished. This episode of The Altered Nostalgic is brought to you by The Review Space. For more videos, please check out youtube.com backslash The Review Space. 
Thanks for watching.